Hello, I hope you are all having a beautiful start to 2024. So let's do a reset vlog. I honestly, when a reset vlog started becoming popular, I literally love watching them. But I was like, I don't, oh my, okay. But I was like, I don't know if I could actually film one myself because I get very stressed out when I clean and I'm like the thought of setting up my camera to film myself cleaning makes me nervous I mean like I love watching them don't get me wrong like the end product is beautiful but for me personally I feel like I would just get very stressed out however I really like have been enjoying these like goal setting videos for the beginning of the year I find them so motivating and I was like mm, maybe I can maybe I can do it so I've decided to do one just specifically for my book room because if I film myself like cleaning the rest of my house I just don't personally I just don't think I could do it but I think my book room is pretty easy because it's just more like putting things away and then dusting so we're gonna be just like talking through like a bunch of different life things how I'm gonna be approaching my reading this year things I changed last year that I liked things that I did last year that I didn't like in terms of reading and content creation and just have a grand old time time so before we get into more of like the cleaning I do have a little bit of a haul because I got some books for Christmas so if you see um one of the videos I recently posted was my book buying ban so you're like why do you have a book haul well I did ask my parents for a big order from Waterstones of why did I say like that water what am I water <laughs> I don't know I just sound really weird from Waterstones for a bunch of exclusive editions that I really wanted for a favorite series and, and that was my loophole. That was my loophole and I have some other books that I may have picked up while I was at the store with my mom and what can I say I have wonderful parents and I know that it is a privilege to have a beautiful Christmas haul like this. So just, but yeah I thought I would open up those packages. Uh, my parents are in Florida, I'm in Boston so I literally media mailed all my books up. If you don't ship your books via media mail like you are losing so much money. It's so cheap and it has tracking and it's pretty fast. I mean like it's not the fastest but like my books got here with in less than a week. I honestly like st stuffed these books in the, these packages and I, I put so much tape because I was so afraid that the box was gonna fall apart. It's so funny like getting a package to yourself that you like address with your own handwriting. <laughs> it just feels weird. Okay, I accidentally turned the heat dial up too high um, and now I'm sweating so I'm gonna open up the window. Hopefully that helps and I lowered the heat, but oh my god. <sighs> okay, I actually had completely forgot that I asked for these but I got the new covers of The Deal by L. Kennedy with the blue sprayed edges. I read this series like forever ago when I first started getting into hockey romance. It's classic in the genre and I just really wanted these ones. They spoke to me so we have the deal, the mistake, the score, the goal, and the legacy which I actually have yet to read. So I will be shelving these on my romance shelves which I recently put together. So you'll see those in a little bit. This package is so big like I can't film myself opening it so I went to Barnes & Noble with my sister to buy her her birthday or no her Christmas present I got her fourth wing and there was a buy one get one 50% off sale for some books so I was like well while I'm here um and it was kind of like my sister's gift to me you know so we bought each other books but we well I picked them all out okay so I got Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater and it's about a girl who's been cursed by a fairy and now she only has like half a soul so her emotional processing and stuff is all different and it's like a fantasy regency fairy tale which like yes I love the whimsical fantasy vibe and we have For the Wolf by Hannah Witten which is like a dark fantasy Little Red Riding Hood retelling which I'm very excited I've had the second book forever but not the first book so when this was part of the sale I'm like well I have the second book I have to buy the first book so this is actually I found this this was my favorite book as a child growing up The Two Princesses of Bamar by Gail Carson Levine and this copy just means a lot for me I actually didn't uh, dig out my copy of Ella Enchanted I gotta find that next but like I loved this book so much as a kid you can see it's very like well worn and well loved and hopefully maybe I can reread it this year or I'm just like really happy to have it like with me physically. Trial of the Sun Queen. Um, I bought this at Target a few months ago when I was at my parents before all this book buying ban stuff so I had to mail it to myself. Books 1 to 4 in the Broken Bonds series. Broken Bonds, Savage Bonds, Blood Bonds, and 
force bonds and these I already had I brought down with me to read them on vacation and then I shipped them back because I didn't want my back to go over the weight limit which is a problem sometimes her Radiant Curse by Elizabeth Lim, which is the prequel novel to the Six Crimson Crane series, and I got the UK copy because I love both the UK and the US covers for the series. They're different, but both equally stunning, so I had to get the UK copy. Fragile Threads of Power by V.E. Schwab. I understand that the new US cover of Fragile Threads of Power is supposed to be about color because the story relies on like something being very colorful, but I still was a little bit sad that it didn't continue with the red, white, and black theme. So when I saw that the UK cover did, I wanted to get it. So I have this. It has these really, really cool stenciled edges and then these like threads off the cover. So, oh, that's very cool. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited and I guess I'll be collecting both the US and the UK for this series. The Hurricane Wars by Thea Guanzon is a book that I already own and I had just brought it down to my parents to read, never read it, but shipped it back. Once Upon a Broken Heart. The Ballad of Never After and A Curse for True Love. You guys know my love for this series is never ending and the UK covers are just so beautiful so I had to get them. Especially because they are like hard covers in the UK or limited time so I really needed to get them in case they went out of print. And then last but not least I have A Fox Glove by Adeline Grace in the UK cover. Um, is this the first printing with the foil? It is beautiful. So I, again, this is one where the US and the UK covers are very different, but I love them both. So I got um, Belladonna in both US and UK. So obviously I had to get the UK cover of Fox Love. Those are all of the books. So the situation that we are dealing with now in my book room that I'm going to start cleaning is just putting things away. So I have a lot of k-pop stuff up and around so i used to be a very avid k-pop collector and then within the past year just having to tighten my budget i really just like stopped collecting i still am an avid k-pop listener but i stopped collecting and then i realized that it actually was just a big financial strain on me and i just couldn't keep up with it anymore especially as k-pop just became like it just became harder to collect the albums because they kept just like pushing out like 10 versions of every release and it just got to be too much for me so i honestly like i had this whole let's see if you see this whole bookshelf here was k-pop and i literally trimmed it down to one shelf of just my favorites um and i've been selling a lot of the other stuff so i have i'm gonna move things into the other room i also have some books to sell that i'm gonna put just in the closet for now um and in the closet are some books that like i'm sure using the closet as a little bit of like a secondary tbr cart books that i like want to read but i'm not sure if i'm gonna want to keep in shelf after i read but i don't want to like get rid of them either so that's kind of what I've been doing and I unhauled like a bunch of books and I just have some things like pretty much just to sell so we're just gonna be like organizing all the things I also have like a pile of books I'm gonna give to my cousin so I'm gonna be just finding other homes for them that, like aren't in my book room to just try and keep like my own personal like little room very happy and then we have like a spare bedroom that we're not really like using for anything that we will eventually turn into a guest room and we are able to like buy we want to buy like a king size mattress for ourselves and then we'll put the queen in there and then we'll have like a fully done up guest room but right now it's not in that state but you know that's also one of my goals for 2024 is like really just trying to like decorate my house more but we'll get more into that later after some cleaning all right so the first order of business here is to just clear out all of the non-book things that are on the floor when i am cleaning i find it very useful to talk myself through the, all the steps so i'll be moving all the k-pop stuff into the other room to organize at a later date that is not on camera <laughs> actually was not too bad so now the next step is to take all of the books that are on the floor that are not going on the shelves and put them in the closet for now yes I'm just putting them somewhere else until another day but that is what it is but it will help my main space be clear and that's what we want Okay, 
Okay, so mostly everything that needs to be put away is off the floor, which is great. So now I just need to put away all of the books that I got and figure out where they are gonna go. And then we will get to dusting. <laughs> We are in front of my special edition shelf, which is like this half shelf I have from Ikea that has my special editions on it. Um, so I got the What's Upon a Broken Heart special editions, I think I'm going to put on here because they won't fit on my regular shelf that I have them on. Um, so now I just need to figure out how I'm going to do that. So that will be the next thing. I took these books off because they are non-special editions that I just threw on the shelf randomly one day. Um, so they're gonna go on my regular shelf. And then I accidentally bought two copies of A Curse for True Love, so I'm gonna sell this one on Pango. Um, and then I have the Burns and Stones and the Water Stones edition of Fowley Fortune. And I think I'm gonna unhaul these just because I haven't read this series yet. Um, so I don't have any particular attachment to these two and I would just read my like standard copy and call it a day. It also like bothers me when there's like one in the series that's a exclusive and then they don't come out with a matching one. So like Barnes & Noble did this exclusive for the first book and I don't think they did spray edges for the second. So to me it's like, well, then why am I gonna hold on to the first one if there's not a matching one to complete the set? You know, it is a personal ache of mine. But anyways. So <clears throat> the last thing I'm going to work on is my TBR card. It just needs to be refreshed a little bit. Uh, one thing I've been talking about on my channel is that I'm not doing TBRs anymore. So I really wouldn't call this like a TBR card. I would call it like a books on my mind card or just books that I don't have like a final place to show off yet and I don't know like if I'm going to want to keep them after I read them kind of thing. So I'm just going to rearrange this a little bit and probably pull off some books that are on my mind lately. It's not really hard and fast like a TBR it's just like a, I'm kind of thinking about these books lately or maybe it's some books that I haven't finished yet that I'm in the middle of. I also have Stitch here. I kind of like them here but then it also is less for up here and then my annotation supplies I'm going to move down to the bottom because I feel like they're just in the way. So. Every winter I say that I'm going to read this when it's snowing because it's such a perfect wintry fantasy and I'm honestly craving like a hot, intricate, like adult fantasy at the moment. That's really what I'm reaching for so she's going on the cart and hopefully I'll start this one tomorrow when it starts snowing. <laughs> This isn't so much a TBR, it's just like books that I've acquired recently or these two I'm in the middle of still. I really want to read Percy Jackson because of the TV show and just random things and there actually wasn't that much that I wanted to pull up to the top so Stitch got to stay and he does look so cute here. Alright, so let's have a little chat and then let's dust and uh, keep going forward. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the habits I made in 2023 that I feel like really worked for me and some things that I want to change in 2024. Okay, so one thing that I did quite a lot of in 2023 that hopefully means I have to do less of it in 2024 is unhauling books. I really went through my collection and I was like, is this a book that I realistically see myself reading at all? in my lifetime or enjoy and wanting to keep. And I got rid of a lot. I also really reflected on my like special editions that I owned and I stopped buying special editions in 2023. I bought one book that was like a continuation of the From Blood Nash set that I had bought um, a long time ago. So it was just like an add on to the set I already had. And then I bought another book that I actually was like, why did I buy this and decided to sell it. So those are special editions from boxes. Um, but yeah, I just unhauled a lot. I was like, why am I holding on to these things? I want my shelves to have at least enough wiggle room that I can still expand, and my book room is quite full. I also unhauled K-pop stuff. 
Um, I stopped collecting K-pop, which that wasn't where I was getting with this, but I did stop collecting K-pop stuff, and I will now only buy an album on occasion, but since I stopped, I have not had the urge. I have not had the urge. So it's quite interesting. But yeah, in terms of my book buying, like I said, I have a whole video that I'm really outlying my rules for myself in terms of reducing my book buying but unhauling definitely just helped me kind of have this like clean slate to really evaluate what are the books that are meaningful for me that I want to have on my shelf for ever and which ones can I part with um and so I'm very happy with the end result and I of course will have a bunch that I've unread maybe I'll read them and I'll hate them and I'll unhaul them but hopefully I love them hopefully I know my taste well enough one thing I have tried to do for the past couple of years but I did again this year now that we moved I was like in a different environment so I used to live on the beach actually so it was super easy for me to go out on the balcony or go out across the street to the beach and read but this year we're in just a regular neighborhood so I got myself a really nice chair to read outside and just reading outside whenever the weather is nice and really making that a priority has just been so nice even though it's like just outside my door there's just something about sitting in the nice weather outside to read that just really makes me different it kind of gets me out in the sun and I just feel like that was such a good habit to have during the warmer months and I really recommend it if you don't do it because it's just beautiful and an amazing experience okay well I already kind of rolled in the no longer buying special editions but yeah I don't buy them anymore very rarely very rarely will I be buying them and like I said, oh, so I also cut down on all my, like, Barnes & Noble pre-orders and stuff. It's crazy. Um, I just was really thinking, like, do I really need this? Do I really need to spend the money on it? And trying to, like, have a very strict, like, one book per pay period. And since I enacted that, there are actually some pay periods that I haven't even bought one book. Crazy. Things that I'm changing, my 2024 goals, things that I think are going to be very good for me. No longer making TBRs no longer making TBRs. They have been such a staple on booktube on my channel for many years and they're supposed to be a helpful tool to help you figure out like what you're in the mood for and what you want to read and I've they instead felt like pressure because I would have I would make a video right like they were staple content for a long time I was like I don't want to stop making it because it's such like easy content to make every month but I was like I'm making these TBRs and then I like don't want to stick to them and it's just putting a lot of pressure on yourself so I was like I'm just gonna stop I'm just gonna stop so along with that, that obviously then is like one video a month that is a staple on my channel. So clearly that's like less content. But then I also thought, and I've really had this like big revelation in terms of content creation as well to like where I don't want to stick to a schedule anymore to try and chase some algorithm and be pressured to post at a certain cadence. And like I understand for you guys that um, support my channel, maybe that sucks for you I'm sorry <laughs> um there are many other lovely booktube creators out there but just for my own life you know like I work full-time I just like have a lot of things going on and like I want this to be a place of joy and a fun hobby and if I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself to get things out weekly and then I like get frustrated where like I feel like I'm playing into the algorithm but I'm not hitting that stroke of luck to keep like growing my channel and then it's just like you're constantly fighting this battle of like the numbers and trying to get blah blah, blah. so I'm like I just I'm not caring I'm not caring about my amount of subscribers anymore or like trying to make my channels grow like I'm just gonna do what makes me happy because the process of creating this content is really fulfilling for me and then of course I really love interacting with you guys in the comments it means the world to me so like those are the things that are important that I'm gonna be focusing on um but yeah now that I kind of have taken that pressure off of myself of course I have a bunch of ideas but it's really just like so nice to feel like if I don't want to post I don't have to and that's such a great mindset shift and I just really feel like it was very needed for me after being on booktube for five years. Like, this is the only way that I'm going to be able to continue creating content with my life. So, just no pressure. So that's kind of like the thing this year. Like, no pressure on my reading goals, on my channel goals. Like, nothing. The goal is to not be stressed out. Low stress, no pressure, and just have fun. Another thing that I want to be doing is utilizing my library and Kindle a lot more. I have a Kindle Unlimited subscription that I use quite often. And I just think that there are some books that I want to try that I don't necessarily know will be a favorite. But I still want to read them, you know? And, like, I shouldn't be spending money on those. I should be getting them from the library. Especially if it's, like, I want to read them physically. I should just be getting it from the library. So I need to actually, like, go in person to the library and get physical books sometimes. Um, I also want to read out my physical TBR. I feel like that is a goal every year. But... I'm gonna actually try and tackle it this year and one way that I'm gonna do that is I have a Google document with a list of all of my unread books in my book room. It's about like 160 books. I don't think I can read all of them in a year but 
can make progress. And um, another thing is I really wanted to try, since I'm being so conscientious about book buying, I really want to be trying to read any book that I buy very soon after purchasing. So like I think I'm giving myself three months before it becomes like a physical TBR book where it's a book that I bought and I read it right away within that time frame I think three months is a long enough time that I won't like add to the physical TBR so it's like a little bit different but yeah I just really want to get back into the mode of like not buying books to have them sit on my shelf forever but buying a book because I genuinely want to read it in that moment and then reading it pretty soon after purchase. One thing that was just really weird to me in 2023 was I it was a year where I felt very lost on my bookish social media and with my reading like in terms of the social media I think kind of like what I had talked about before where I honestly think I was just experiencing burnout by trying to stick to a schedule and comparing myself to other people and just it was just like a never-ending cycle and hopefully with this new mindset shift that I've had I can break myself out of that cycle and just start having genuine fun again um but the other component of that is my reading and something I noticed is that I haven't really been reading as much like adult high fantasy and YA high fantasy as I used to because I'm reading a lot like on my kindle like romance novels, fantasy romance, like smutty fantasy romance, fun, um, kind of veering more towards those books that are like fast reads on my kindle and I don't know if that was because of like a physical like reading goal because last year I did set my goodreads goal at 50 and then I only increase it once I like far surpass that so yeah so like I obviously have been kind of wanting to change that but I like it was just really weird where I would kind of go all or nothing on a genre where I'm like I'm gonna read like every fantasy ever and then be like I'm not reading those other genres anymore not just because I was in the mood for something else and then like my mood would shift and then I would feel bad if I didn't read like 10 million fantasy books in a row bro it's kind of weird to explain but I was like kept being like oh I like need to read this kind of book and then getting disappointed when I like my mood switched to something else um but I still do think I want to read more of my physical TBR and more of my like high fantasy a longer chunkier books and setting a low and attainable reading goal is one way to do that because then I don't shy away from books because of the like length of them because I feel like they're not gonna like add to the reading goal like reading goals no more it's very arbitrarily set at 50 because that's very easily accomplished for me because I still like, want to participate in the Goodreads challenge but anyways so I don't know I just got in this thing where I'm like I'm gonna read like 500 YA books or 500 fantasy books from here on out and, like I'm only gonna be reading high fantasy and I just like didn't give myself room for all of the other genres that I love and in 2023 like I discovered I have a burning passion for alien romance um and sometimes I think like you like I love like a good serious complex political fantasy but I also love like a good smutty fast-paced time either in fantasy romance or just in contemporary romance like I need to give myself room to just like read all of these things and to just really pick up what I'm feeling in the moment so I tend to get in a mood for something and then it will kind of pass so like what was my last mood my last mood was like I'm gonna read like dark fantasy romance because I read one that I really liked and then I like read another series in the genre and then I was like okay like I'm over it so I like I feel like I need to focus I want to focus on reading more of these like physical TPR books that tend to be all like high fantasy YA adult but give myself room to read other things and then not feel like I have to be tied or married to like just reading one genre at a time it's a very weird personal problem I don't know you know we're at a new year and I feel very refreshed and I feel like I'm just gonna give myself permission to just really do everything the kind of mantra of the year is like low stress low key no pressure and just live my life and read like I'm getting married this year which is crazy like there are a lot of good and exciting things that are coming up for me and I just need to take the pressure off in other places so this was actually really fun to film um I hopefully my book room won't get so messy that I'll have to do resets a lot but I had a good time I hope you guys enjoyed chatting through 2024 goals and other things and let me know if you liked this video is there like a cleaning emoji is there a broom or something like that I don't know maybe the bubbles for like soap okay leave like the bubble <laughs> emoji if you want this far and have some fun read some books and I'll catch you guys in the next one